Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new Fallout 76 tips video and today we are taking a look at some of the best ways to get camp plans as rapidly as possible in Fallout 76. Okay, so I'm sure there's a lot of people who already know this stuff, but for those who are starting new characters and maybe want a little refresher or who are new to the game, there's a few things we can do to speed up the process of getting camp plans. Overall, it's not a particularly quick process, but uh, there are a few ways we can speed things up a bit, so we're going to jump in and look at those. First up, first thing you need to know is that a lot of this is going to require caps, and quite a lot of them, so you're going to need to spend quite a bit of time focusing on making sure you're earning as many caps as possible. A couple of good ways that I like to do it is to run with Farmer Farmer, the luck perk on, and sell any excess chems that I've got to robot vendors either at train stations or at the White Spring. It's a good way of earning a few caps. Also grab any uh, weapons, things like that, from fallen enemies that uh, I happen to come across whilst I'm running around the game and sell those off as well as a good way of building up. Beyond that, there are other things you can do as well, but uh, it's probably outside the scope of this video and certainly outside the scope of my expertise, so something you might want to look into but you will need a good few caps to do a lot of these things one of the ways you can also get caps though is to sell any good gear any extra plans that you don't need things like that any scrap that you might want to get rid of often sells well in your player vendors at your camp and uh, speaking of this this is also a good segue into the first way and the best way probably to get plans reasonably quickly which is to check out people's vendors if you have a look on the main map, you can see a little icon that comes up when you hover over people's camps to show what they've got on sale, particularly show plans available. If somebody's got plenty of them, then you can head on over there and see what they've got available. The UI for camp vendors is very helpful as well. It will tell you if you already know a plan so you don't end up buying duplicates. And you can scroll through there, pick up any plans that you happen to want to. Make sure you learn them straight away, that way that you don't end up picking up duplicates without realising it, because it only tells you you know them once you've actually learned the plan. So, always worth making sure you do that. A little caveat on this one, of course. Keep an eye on the prices people are asking for some of these plans. A lot of them are reasonably common plans, and if you're trying to pick them up quickly and early on in a particular character's uh, lifespan, for example, then you may want to avoid buying some of the more expensive plans. You do get some outrageous prices asked sometimes, so keep that one in mind. That said, if you're looking at something that is particularly rare, and you particularly happen to want, then it might be worth spending a little bit more. So uh, keep an eye on things like that, check things out, make sure you know roughly what looks rare and what looks more common. And if you're not sure, Google it's your best bet. As uh, obviously we can't really go through them all right now, and it will change over time as well. So watch those prices, but uh, you should be able to pick up a lot of plans very quickly for very reasonable prices a lot of the time as well, and really build out the amount of plans you've got available to build with. So, speaking of buying plans, the next option that is a very good way of picking them up is to head over to the White Spring, head inside the main hotel and down to the lower floor where you'll find the shopping mall. Down there you'll find a lot of different faction vendors. You can also find these guys at train stations as well. They'll often have a few unique plans as well that you can only pick up from those faction vendors. So you can head in there, grab those for caps as well. They tend to be a bit more expensive at this point, but a lot of them are unique to those vendors as well. So. If you want those plans, that's what you're going to have to do, is spend a, a reasonable number of caps on them. But there's a good few of those in the White Spring as well, so it's an easy place to find them without having to hop all over the map looking for them. And the other thing in here is Pendleton over at Studio 58. If you check this guy out, he's got a lot of plans that are focused on the White Spring and a few more general ones as well. And these are all unique and the only place you can pick them up is from Pendleton. They're also pricey, which is a bit unfortunate, but... Uh, if you do want these plans, and a lot of them are really good ones and definitely worth having, the ones that I use a lot, then this is where you need to go to pick them up, which again, costs you those caps. But it's a, a good selection and a lot of them are really worth having. As I say, some are White Springs themed, some are a bit more general, there's some Baltic stuff in there, and there's some more obscure stuff as well, and a lot of it's really, really cool. So, definitely a good place to pick those up. So, moving outside of the shopping for a minute, one of the best ways to pick up plans is to take over public workshops. Uh, the first time you do this, you'll find you get a whole load of defence plans, so definitely worth doing that at the very least once. You can do it on public servers, but if you've got private servers as well, if you have Fallout first, then that's even easier to do. But if you take over a whole bunch of these things, you will get a plan each time you capture a workshop. And shortly afterwards, you'll get a mission to defend that workshop from whatever wasteland creatures decide to attack it. When you successfully defend it, you get another plan and a whole load of scrap as well. 
If you have several workshops going at once, sort of five or six, something like that, you can keep hopping between these various events and defending workshops over and over, and you'll rack up quite a few plans. You'll get quite a few duplicates as well, but you should pick up quite a few plans reasonably quickly that way. So definitely a good option for free plans, basically. And a whole load of free scrap as well, which is always a win. It is worth watching out for the PvP if you're going to do this on public workshops, so it's not as much of a problem as it used to be, but be aware, sometimes other players will show up and compete for the workshop and you might have to fight to defend it, or you can let it go, not worry about that, maybe server hop and uh, avoid the person who's doing that and start over again and continue harvesting those plans. So one other th event in game that is really good for picking up certain set of specific plans is the powering up events that happen at the three power stations. That's Poseidon Energy near Charleston, Monongo Power Plant, funnily enough, up near Mon Monongo, and Thunder Mountain up in the Maya. If you complete those powering up events that trigger when you first arrive at those power stations, you will get, at the end of them, a plan for a generator, and that's your best bet to pick those up. It's a dead easy event to run through, you've got about an hour to complete it in, so no problem at all there. And you get a unique plan each time you go through it for three or four times. There's only three or four available, but that's your best bet for getting a few extra generator options if you need to get some extra power into your camp. So if you're looking for more specific rare rewards, you can pick most of those up from seasonal events. There tends to be quite a lot of really cool plans available from those. So you've got Fashion Act, Meat Tweak, Mothman Equinox, and we've got uh, Invaders from Beyond as well. All of those tend to drop unique sort of themed plans, often some really cool ones for your camps that are worth picking up. There's also the Halloween and Christmas Scorched events, which also drop a lot of unique plans from the spooky treat bags or the holiday gifts that the legendary creatures drop in those events. Those are definitely worth farming for. And there is Hunt for the Treasure Hunter as well, which is a similar sort of thing with mole miners. With Hunt for the Treasure Hunter, your best bet is actually not so much to hunt the mole miners down, as it is to, again, spend a large amount of caps, head over to vendors at either train stations or the White Spring, that works as well, and pick up the empty mole miner pails. If you go for the middle tier ones, then you'll have your best drop rate to value ratio, so definitely the one to go for. Don't bother with the most expensive ones. The drop rate's slightly better, but it's not enough to offset the massive jump in price, so go for that middle tier, buy a load of those up, head over to a tinker's bench, craft up those pails and open them, and you will get the best set of drop rates you're going to get for the rewards from Hunt for the Treasure Hunter. But again, fair warning, that does cost a fair few caps to do. So, last couple of things. Seasons. These often have a number of limited time rewards that you can pick up for your camp. If you work your way through the scoreboard, you'll find you're getting a few as you progress. Some of the best ones are often at the latter portion, so it takes quite a lot to get to those. And it's also worth noting that often those don't come back around either, so if you've missed out on them, you might not be able to pick them up. So grab them while they're available is the, the advice there. While you're doing that and you're earning score, you'll probably be doing daily ops quite regularly, especially if you've got mm, reasonably past the level 50 mark. So that's a good way of picking up a few rare rewards as well there. There's some specific daily ops camp objects that you can pick up. The drop rates are not spectacular on those, and there's quite a long list of things available from daily ops, so... You may have to keep doing those, but chances are, as the clue's in the name, you'll be doing them daily. So there's a good chance you'll pick up a reasonable number from that. The other option is you can also pick those up from gold bullion vendors. That applies to the scoreboard in general and daily ops. You often find things popping up in the gold bullion vendors' inventories. You have to have completed the Wastelander storyline to do that, but you'll find them at Foundation and Crater. And you'll also find Minerva, who is another gold bullion vendor who travels between Foundation, Fort Atlas and Crater, usually at the start of the week. She's not there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. She will probably be there uh, in one of those locations at the end of the week. It tends to be towards the end of the month, that one, though. You can usually find a few plans available there for gold bullion, which you can definitely pick up. So the last thing to mention is the Atomic Shop. And a lot of people are not keen on spending real-world money on picking up in-game items, which is fine. However, if you want to pick up what are arguably some of the best objects in the game from a camp-building perspective, then the Atomic Shop is where you're going to find a lot of them. You can get atoms through doing challenges in-game. If you have a look on your challenge menu via the map, you'll find a whole load of challenges there that will drop atoms for you. They're one-offs, unfortunately, and they take a while to earn, and the rewards for them aren't great. You'll also find you get atoms from completing seasons as well. If you happen to have Fallout first, there's atoms included with that, and you can also buy them if you so desire. But it's worth bearing in mind, because a lot of the coolest stuff does come from the Atomic Shop, which is unsurprising, really, but first have to fund the game somehow. If you keep an eye on that, head through there, you'll often find some really cool stuff. Those tend to cycle through, so you'll see older objects coming back if you've missed them, and you'll get a, another bite of that particular apple. It's a good way to find some of, as I say, the best decorative items, 
Some of my favourite things to use a lot come from the Atomic Shop as well, particularly with things like prefabs, stuff like that, which are always fun to include in your camps. But there we go. That's the main ways to get plans for your camp and to get stocked up. It's not a fast system at the best of times, but hopefully there's a few tips in there that will help you speed things up and collect the plans and flesh out your camps a lot more quickly. So I do hope you found this useful and informative. If you did, please do consider dropping subs and likes. I do very much appreciate it. Do check out some of the other tips guides I've got on the channel as well. You'll find them linked up in the top right corner of the video on a card. And uh, check out some of the camp builds I've done as well. Hopefully there's some cool ideas for you there as well. If you check down below the video as well in the description, you'll find my social media links, merch store and channel memberships on that blue join button if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. I hugely appreciate it. It really helps out. So massive thanks to everybody who's done that. And if you get a chance to join us for live streams as well, we are of course playing Fallout 76, and we've usually got a secondary game on the go as well, it's always good fun, so do drop in and hang out for those as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.